We got Ben Gillette in the studio. One of my favorite guests on the show, but but he don't he only comes around like once a year, I think. At this well, point, I he's live a man. in another city. He's a very busy man. I live in busy. another city. Yeah, that's true. We that's love true. when you come by and say hi. Like, is there someone outside of the room we'll be talking to? No, <laughs> <laughs> only for phone calls. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a lot of phone calls coming in. Mm. Lines ah. lighting up. No, well, I mean if you want to go to the phones no, later, I I was, you don't care, right? No, I'm half asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little more mellow. You know? This is you half asleep, though. Yeah, it is. This wow. is me half asleep. Wow. This is me dozing off. Wow. He's this is a, me dozing off. He's on three, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This on three right about now. Um, I, I'm i very psyched. I have a uh, DVD in front of me. Bullshit. Yep. It's season seven. And season, season eight starts seven. Thursday night. Season. Now, you know what? Wow. Wow. Did you think that when, when you first went on that this yeah. was going to... Yeah. When we first pitched the show <laughs> to Showtime uh, one week after 9-11, yeah. saying that we were going to be really, really skeptical and tear anyone who believed in anything a new asshole, I said, you know, this is going to go forever. We're going we're gonna to have a good run. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was absolutely hopeless. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah the, even the, during the pitches, yeah. we would kind of taper off halfway through. I, we pitched to several <laughs> different places. Taper off, like, <laughs> yeah, we're not even believe, we don't even believe no, in this crap. You're right. Yeah, you're not going to ever, ever go with moving this. Moving into season eight, are you running out of things to do the bullshit well, thing? Well, you know, with? it's, it's, it's oh, You're getting a little nervous, aren't you? Because, uh, because there is really so much less bullshit in the world right. than there uh, was a while uh, ago. Uh, because yeah, right? you probably noticed that. You probably noticed that no one. No one's lying anymore. No. And there's no jive going on. That's so amazing. it's really killing us. No! Of course We're not, not okay. running out of stuff. That's Although good to Although we hear. had to do some negotiation. They really wanted us to do cheerleaders for the opening show. Because <laughs> they thought, you know, all we're selling is, is tits and saying motherfucker. And... Uh, I wanted to do vaccines. <laughs> you know, everybody would think if you're fighting with a network that it's the big dumb loud guy who yeah. just says, "Give us tits and give us pussy, put it out there." Yeah. And it's the network that's saying, "Doing some, do something sixty minutes like vaccines." <laughs> it's exactly the opposite. You know, can you do nudity? What what's what's bullshit about nudity? You know, there's a lot of stories about nudity in the press. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, there's that guy who was photographed through his door. You know, with his dick hanging out over coffee. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that'd be a great show. <laughs> well, that's, no, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. That's he should bullshit. be able to have his dick show. out during coffee. Yeah, but I'd like to do vaccines because the anti-vaccines, people are dying of measles. There's, uh, you know, uh, whooping cough is coming back, especially in the Southern California area in uh, in uh, in England. So, yeah, but that's not sexy. Listen, I'll give you tits. Right. We'll give you a Playboy model answering Jenny McCarthy. Uh, we'll do the whole gag will be Jenny McCarthy is against vaccines. This is how big her tits are. We have one with big her tits, but she's going to read the real results. So we ended up doing cheerleaders, and cheerleaders ended up being a good show. It's uh, now, what is the bullshit factor it's, of cheerleaders? It's more interesting than you could possibly imagine. I don't doubt um, it. In 1973, 72, one of the two, feminists uh, put a bill through to say that cheerleading would not be considered a sport in the United States, public schools. That seems to be just nothing. Who cares? It brings more soccer and more so on. But what that means is the people who coach cheerleading in this country don't have to be certified with any sort of sports background, which means more children die cheerleading this country than all other sports put together. No. Are you yes. kidding me? Paralyzed from the neck down. Oh, all, those, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, because they and... take the smallest girl in the class, throw her 20 feet in the air, and then talk about Twilight while she's up there. You know, <laughs> They lose interest. Bang! She comes back on her neck and she doesn't fucking walk again. Okay? And uh, all of that comes out of these unintended consequences of, well, you know, it's not a very feminist thing to do, so do this. And this company that sells all the cheerleading stuff is thrilled about this because they get to sell to the parents instead of the schools, so they make a lot more money. So there wow. really is a lot of bullshit around uh, cheerleading. there was a bullshit factor no in cheerleading. Idea. And, and they're not you get to do the sexy angle. Yeah, but the thing is, you can do the sexy angle on vaccines, for Christ's sake. <laughs> All you need to do is take their fucking clothes off, and it's sexy. Now it it's doesn't sexy. matter what you're talking about. I mean, that's, they think the subjects have to be sexy, and I try to tell them, no, no, we can we can do anal sex while talking about, uh, uh, you know, homo homeopathy. We can do that. If you, if you want me, you know, jerking off on someone's tits while talking about chiropractic, I can do that. I can do it. I 
I can multitask. Now you got the sexy and the bullshit. Sure and the, you do. Yeah, yeah. Put it all together. And, and, you're, and you're tired this morning. You're tired. Very tired. Yeah, you need, you need coffee off. or anything? I got some water. <laughs> I don't drink <laughs> caffeine. <laughs> Really? No. I don't drink caffeine. Well, I you don't, don't need do any it. speed. No, no. no methamphetamine. Was <laughs> <laughs> no there anything you guys wanted to cover that they actually said no and won? Uh, they, uh, we, were, we were kind of vetoed on Scientology. Wow. And in order to punish us, Matt and Trey of uh, South Park uh. came out and said, Penn said to us over dinner, because I wasn't going to brag about that. <laughs> Penn said to us over dinner they couldn't do Scientology, so fuck them, we're doing it. And they yeah. did their big Scientology and big show Scientology and show, did a yeah. better job than we would have. I mean, it, they did. It, it was really good. Did they yeah. really veto you on Scientology? Like, what was their argument to say? I just, uh, I don't really know. And, it, you know, you, veto is a little bit strong. There's a list of about. 40 subjects for each year that's going around. You know how showbiz works. Mm -hmm. And I go, I don't I don't want to do this. And then we go, well, Showtime's not interested in this one. And you kind of compromise back and it's forth. Good, there Showtime isn't really, really much... wants cheerleaders. Penn really <laughs> wants vaccines. <laughs> vaccines. You know, that's what we're learning today. There's not much bullshit in Scientology, though, so you wouldn't no, have much isn't. material. No, no, it's pretty of course, straightforward Of course there are alien and... overlords <laughs> yes. running everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, Xenu is, uh, has been fighting all of us oh since we God. were first put inside the volcano. Yeah. But there's other stuff that's bullshit. We, we, <laughs> we really have to get that evilness out of us. And uh, it apparently costs but a lot also, of money. But also, one of those reasons, <laughs> and I suppose this is uh, defeats the purpose of being quiet about it. But, um, <laughs> one of the uh, one of the problems with things like Scientology is outside of a very small group of people, everybody knows it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. And I like to do subjects where, like, Cheerleading, someone who is skeptical and knows stuff can say to me, what, what's, what's bullshit about cheerleaders? Yeah. And you can give them a little piece of information. You know, the problem is when we do things like Ouija boards, you know, you, 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 you kind of get excited and go, there's this cool thing we talk, and then you kind of go, but there's not one person that's that ever tuned in our show that went, you mean Ouija boards are bull <laughs> You know, so <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of felt. Scientology was in that category too, so I didn't fight hard for it. You guys did a funny job with uh, Feng Shui way back. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They, just, one of my they, they kind of just let it speak for themselves. Yep. Which is all these people saying this is exactly what it should be, and they had rearranged the room completely differently. You know, well, like none of these yeah, assholes knows what they're talking that's about. That's what you guys do so well. Is you don't have to sit there and go, "This is bullshit." Let me explain to you. They let the people just hang themselves. Well, you know, that's the thing we don't do, and uh, this is. Uh, Probably surprising. We don't do any ambush, mm -hmm. and we don't do any misrepresentation. We don't do any of the Michael Moore stuff nope. or the Sasha Baron Cohen stuff. If we come to you, we're going to say to you, you know, guys, we're doing the bullshit on uh, on uh, morning shock jocks, and Penn and Teller are on the opposite side from you, and they're going to call you an asshole. Do you want to be interviewed for it? All right. We, yeah. Hi, I'm Anthony Cumia. I am on the Opie and Anthony show. Exactly. Let's do and then this. I just start babbling and make an idiot of myself, and then you guys come on and go, oh, see? <laughs> see? <laughs> we will, we, I try to be. I try to say that we are fair and very, very biased. <laughs> yeah. We don't take you out of context. We don't even show shit of you picking your nose, no, which we no. have a lot of. We get a lot of, of B roll. We just, we just try yeah. to say. And no one, we haven't got any letters complaining that people were taken out of context. Misrepresented nice. or yeah. anything. We, just... we lay, I mean, they, they sometimes go much longer than we show. I, but we give, yeah. the, we give the essential stuff. I bet they sit there and go like, wow, why did I say that? <laughs> that really made this I really am full of shit. Bad. Yeah, I am full of shit. Hey, was there anything you guys wanted to attack that you realized wasn't as much bullshit as you thought? We had a little trouble uh, with hypnotism. Oh, I we, think you're going to say Hitler for a second. Yeah. <laughs> they really are pesky. Yeah. He has some very good points. You yeah, know, the trains uh, ran on. <laughs> uh, on hypnotism, wow. we kind of came in, you know, 100 miles an hour down a dead-end street hmm. because all we knew was uh, stage hypnotism, which is 100% bullshit. Right. You know, you're going to quack like a duck and wear a bra. Yeah. You know, that, that shit. And, uh, but then we got into the clinical stuff, and it turned out that we simply didn't know. And the show is, uh, I'm kind of proud of it, because we do a show where we say in the middle, we kind of don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's a pretty, that's a pretty hip thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But as far as being satisfying, you know, if you're watching home and you want to go, yeah, rip my new asshole, take him out, take him out, Penn and Tiller, you, 
guys don't know, really, do you? <laughs> you did some research and you can't figure it out. Well, go! <laughs> what you guys are like bullshit. Stuff like uh, regression and stuff like that? No, 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 the regression stuff is bullshit. I mean, like, the memories coming back. No, 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 I mean, bullshit. memories coming back. Memories coming back is bullshit, too. But to be able to say, which is what I wanted to say, that there is no state of hypnosis, that it's all completely fake, you can't really do. What is They're it when just, they can make you remember stuff that normally you couldn't remember? Uh, that, uh, that isn't real. What, they, what it does change, however, which I thought was fascinating, is it changes your confidence in the memory. So your memory is no mm. more accurate, but you think it's much more accurate. So all the stuff, that's what I was hoping for. You know, past life regression, uh, improved memory, stage hypnosis, all of that total bullshit. But then, you know, you want to go in and make some sort of big statement. And when you get to the, what is the state that we call hypnosis? What does it mean? What does it accomplish? The only real answer right now is I don't know. The, the strongest thing you can say is, and neither does anyone else. Right. But, uh, but you know, that's, uh, that's as strong as you can get. Yeah, because there's this misconception that it's, you know, the old lightning bolts coming out of the fingertips into the eyes, and they do that pinwheel thing. <laughs> Or is a it just... A lot of people still believe yeah, that. Yeah, still believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hypnodisc. Yeah. You, you, you yeah, bought the hypnodisc, a hypnodisc of course. in order to get laid Spins when you were young. And That'll I, work. I could get her. I got my x-ray specs or just so I could see her tits ahead of time. <laughs> then my hypnodisc. A relaxed state. Or just a complete relaxed state of mind where you can maybe clear out the stresses and, and think a little better. A feeling that's never been felt in this room. Uh, exactly. By anyone. Yeah. No, Heterosexuality? No <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do, Jim? What is it that, I, I think when I was a kid, I went in school, they had a guy come in, or wherever it was, where they make you not remember a number between one and ten. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, I remember being very frustrated counting to ten and knowing something was wrong, but like doing it on my fingers and coming up one short. And I don't know. I'm, obviously, I knew. Were the you numbers. Jerry Garcia in a yeah, previous hey, life? Yeah, the fingers. <laughs> I don't remember what. How? Like, what is that? It's got to be some sort of. A, there's something yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, that's that's that that's the kind of thing that we just don't know. I mean, I have this sense. Uh, that there's a, there's a pretty easy explanation, but there wasn't really a, a a thing we could land on. You know, we couldn't just land on the tonic mm. at the end like we yeah. like to. What uh what kind of subjects are you getting on uh, season eight? What you season eight, on? we're doing uh the uh, the aforementioned cheerleaders yes, and vaccines, of <laughs> and uh, we're also doing self esteem. You know the whole self esteem movement, which is insane. You know the trophy generation. Right. Uh, we oh, have such fuck, great footage you. of where everyone gets a trophy. Everybody gets a trophy. Yeah. We talk about that all the time. <laughs> it's it's, no, it's no insane. No winners, no losers. They don't even keep score. All that crap. Right? Oh yeah, or they keep score and then still celebrate the losers. Yeah, I mean it's 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 phenomenal. We're yeah. We're doing, oh, we're doing that one, and we're also doing fast food, which after all the uh, all the stuff about you, know, we have um, we have wonderful uh, uh, this whole movement to get all the calories up for fast food, especially in New York. You know, mm -hmm. all this stuff, and the fact of the matter is that the fancy restaurants, the really expensive restaurants, are putting two sticks of butter in every single <laughs> thing you eat. Mm -hmm. You know, you get lima beans. There's two sticks of butter in it. The calories are through the roof, but the do-gooders are all fucking rich. Right. So they just uh, they just push this. So the fast food episode is really good, and for the first mm. time ever, um, so, you know, we get accused all the time. All the time we get accused of, well, you know, they're in the pocket of this corporation or that corporation, or they get free shit for doing this. Or they're being bought off. In the fast food episode, for the first time, someone really did give a shit. Carl's Jr. actually gave us hamburgers. Oh, it was the damn. greatest thing in the world. <laughs> we were actually bought off by Carl's Jr. And the and the CEO of Carl's Jr. comes on the show. And we're saying to him, you're the CEO of a big company. Don't come on a show called Bullshit. Who are your fucking advisors? <laughs> yeah, really? you we're trying to be helpful to them. You, know? you don't want to do this. Don't talk to us. I mean, here's my advice to anyone who's asked to do the show bullshit. Don't. <laughs> we're, we're, we're honest. We're good guys. But don't go on a show called but, bullshit. But you will always get them on. It's to, They feel compelled. <laughs> Is it more that they want to give their point of view or they just want to be on TV? Uh, well, there's there's two ways to look at that. One way is to think that they believe they're right. Right. And the other way is to think. But the amazing thing is, you know, they did this show on, I think, a &E or something that was on Nostradamus. 100% bullshit, Nostradamus. All the predictions. Yeah. And they were doing a pro-Nostradamus show. A 
just total pro right away. And they called us up to be the villains. We were going to be the guys that came on and said it was bad, and then they were going to come back and say, you know, the A and E equivalent of "shut up, asshole," yeah, and go mm-hmm. on and, and prove it. And we didn't, we didn't hesitate to go on. We said, if you don't take us out of context, and we get to make our point, we believe we're right. We believe we can make the point. And I like to think if there were, for instance, a hardcore Christian or Catholic version of bullshit, which I don't know what that would be called, hooey, I suppose, (laughs) um, we would go on. I would go on and make an atheist case Mm -hmm. and then have them come back and say, you know, then there's this asshole and throw it to me and say it. I think if you sincerely believe that what you're saying is right and you're talking about a marketplace of ideas and the people on the other side say, we're going to make fun of you, we're going to rip you a new asshole, we're going to do this, 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 and this, but for the four minutes that you're on, you'll make your point clearly and we won't, we won't, no, not Michael Moore, not, you know, Sasha Mm -hmm. Baron Cohen, but you can just say it. I think I would do it. Sure. And in my in my happier, more positive moments, I like to think that's the reason people do it. But I also know that people will, you know, blow dogs for wine change <laughs> if they'll be on a <laughs> if they'll be on a reality show. So there's the more cynical way to look right. at it too. You got both choices. Who was Nostradamus? Thing? Cause it probably uh, was bullshit. But like they, they but like he said, Hister. Like how it was that just the something? river Hister will overflow its banks. Did he say that or did he mention Hitler by name? But no, off by one letter, it's Hitler all crap. Yes, he mentioned so a river would overflow its banks at some point, and they go, oh, that's clearly Nazi Germany. The thing about a prediction is you should be able to understand it before the thing happens. Not re- rationalize <laughs> what it means after the fact. After the thing happens, it's really a piss-poor prediction. You could turn anything into yeah. a prediction so you've afterwards. Got, if, yeah. you take, uh, if you take uh, uh, you know, on, uh, on, uh, on 9-11, Bob Dylan's uh, album, um, uh, Love and Theft, was released on 9-11, during which he talks about, clearly, New York City and airplanes going down in in D.C. And uh, the poetry around it, if you separated that by 200 years, (laughs) would look like he was predicting. The quality of poetry is such that you're dealing with high-level abstractions that are true to the human heart, and human beings are pattern-finding animals. Mm. So you're going to be able to do that. So really, the better the poetry, the more it seems predicted. We've all had the experience of going through an, uh, an emotional love relationship and turning on the radio and the song is absolutely about you. Now it turns out it's Don Hinley. <laughs> You're embarrassing and you'll never admit that to anyone as long as you live, but you felt it. Boys of Summer. Yeah. Boys of Summer. Uh, it's, yeah. it's like he's talking to me. <laughs> it does it makes complete sense. So yeah. Don Hinley did her too. Amazing. <laughs> In your car going, I, God damn. I gotta ask him about martial arts. What's what's bullshit about martial arts what's wrong with you about martial arts is it's fine it's gonna be in the new episode if you uh, see it if you see his exercise Mm -hmm. and you see it as you know having a good time if you think it's self-defense you're out of your mind how many times have have mars mars is one of those guys Ah, 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 what do you think of that queer you you can't do shit Ah, you can't fuck us up Ah. all i want to ask you is how many headlines have you seen? Oh boy, you asked him a question. This isn't. Really How many well. headlines have you seen he speak that English. say <laughs> mugging <laughs> thwarted by martial arts training? <laughs> now you've seen that more or less than the headline "psychic wins lottery." <laughs> which, which one do you see more? Yeah, go ahead, Mars. Answer. I've, I've seen, many Mars. I've seen a few articles about uh, oh, people. You have it. Yes, yeah. have it. Where? There was the Sources. article. There was an article recently that five guys dressed as ninjas stopped a mugging by running out on a college campus. But I think five guys running out dressed as oh I don't know fairies yes. Yes. stopped yes. the mugging. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, and. If you do it with martial arts, the laws are exactly the same as if you shot somebody. Yeah. Except your hands hurt more. I mean, if you learn all this stuff and kill somebody with martial arts, you are still going to go up for manslaughter. Yeah. So you don't really. But if if you're talking about just, I want to hang out with other guys in a sweaty room and move around, there's also (laughs) no, there's absolutely, and I didn't even know this, the belts mean nothing. 
There is no uh, standardized uh, point uh, item on uh, uh, Mars. Your there, belt means uh, nothing. You hang know. yourself with it. <laughs> <laughs> there is no standardization for Ask him what is belt. That correct? What belt you got? What, what, belt what do you got? I'm a purple belt. Uh, purple belt. Purple. Oh, that's but the purple belt, depending on exactly what kojo you're in, uh, oh. D depending on exactly the classes you're in, it means something different, not only state to state, but strip mall to strip mall. <laughs> it means, it means a different thing. So black belt could be the first thing that you go through. Well, no, no, no. It's, it it's could usually, always be like... It's usually the same order. But you can make it up, though, and just Absolutely. be like... There's, there's no, no regulations. Absolutely. You could it's have no right. governing body over belts. <laughs> there is no governing body, and it's also completely an American invention, which is what's really funny. Uh, it was a Marketing oh, thing. There's oh, no like. Oh, there's nobody with he, a pebble in their head. hand. He's shaking his head at you, Penn. You're saying what? It's a Japanese tradition. It's a Japanese tradition to have a purple belt. <laughs> <laughs> See, the meaning of the belt is it starts off white and you never wash it, so it gets darker. Eventually, it becomes black. I I uh, uh, I will disagree, and circle gets a square. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure that that, that actually silly. goes back to the, uh, uh, the, the well, Japanese you, thing. Does anybody no. know? There's got to be somebody out there listening who knows. Japanese filled it in grape juice. That's how the purple belt. <laughs> the purple belt. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, you could uh, you could find out. You know, uh, uh, what we found out in our research was that the the whole belt system and how you go through it was an American invention. There may be a story from Japan of don't wash your clothing right um and that may be a japanese tradition and may, that may give some of the funk to the sushi the i don't dirty know belt right right but it probably dirty got a belt. dirty making a but shit I would film do a search for i would do a search for dirty japanese clothing <laughs> <laughs> he's got a japanese judo was the first martial art to of course he's pulled this up on a website that some 14 year old just it, created in his cellar yes yeah, so it, it, and people think everything they read online is true which well, is uh, very uh, hey, hey 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 not so much anymore. anymore not so it much is. anymore it is <laughs> it is uh, it is hey uh, <laughs> there really are Russian girls that do ass, ass to mouth well, really yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn nice well, well, for the <laughs> former Soviet Union that's what they learned over there that was their job training program wow you're pissing off a lot of martial art guys my oh, father yeah. was a nuclear physicist <laughs> now pull pants down <laughs> <laughs> it was always better over there always better always, always better i was uh, working for uh, the nuclear facilities uh, very good uh, what would you want sauerkraut <laughs> what do you want on the uh, but so true we suck in your um <laughs> Wow, they're just making fun of Mars now on the phones. That's right. Oh, of course oh. they are. <laughs> Penn's not putting on his headphones uh, yet, so maybe later. Hold on, can I ask you about Area 51? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, that's another topic uh, that's going to be on Season ah, 8 of Bullshit, which starts Thursday works. at 10 p.m. on Showtime. We all want to believe in Area 51. Do we? Do we, yeah, we, we kind of. I want to believe in aliens. What, do, what, do what are you, you wanna, doing to me here? What do you think? Well, you know, you, if you want to believe in aliens, there's just been stuff coming from Titan, the moon on Saturn, that says. But if you're going to find aliens, you're probably going to find, you know, single cell methane based. True. true. And methane based life forms you are, can't play are fun. With them. It's yeah. fart jokes and nothing else. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think expecting intelligent life that travels uh, billions. of of light years across the universe just to appear to exclusively drunken fishermen <laughs> in, <laughs> in Alabama yeah. seems like they have odd motives. Yeah, It seems uh, like you'd want to stop in, I don't know, when they're broadcasting a television show. Yeah. And there's a great quote that I only saw one place, so I'm not sure of it. We couldn't verify it, but um, I think Steven Spielberg said that he was surprised that with all the video cameras we weren't seeing more UFO more footage. More right now. <laughs> yeah, we have brought this up uh, because we have. In, the, in the 50s and 60s when you really had this UFO <laughs> phenomenon going on and, and, and people were taking the pictures of them. Uh, no one walked around with a camera all the time. Yeah, everybody now, has a camera. Everyone, if some, believe me, if a cop <laughs> taps on someone a little too hard, there's 20 videos of it. But and what the mashup the with Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Of course. Um, um, yum, I remember the, all the skirts and all. Got, but but UFOs for some reason 
we can't get them on on somebody's well, camera phone. That's because phone. in 1958, a frisbee on Super 8 was exciting. It looked great. Yeah, <laughs> it really looked good. You know, the first time you see a frisbee on Super 8, that's <laughs> yeah. some boss shit. You're like, holy 50 shit! 50 years after, some power the, lines in the background <laughs> for scale, and and you're set. You can't pull that off anymore, unfortunately. No, oh, you can pull hey, it off. Just no one cares. Do you believe in aliens? No one cares. Do you believe there's other life forms I out think, there, like I, real life forms? Well, something I, impressive. <laughs> life forms, not you, not the like. one cell fucking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fuck you the have, one cell. It seems to me you have disrespect for methane based. <laughs> yeah, cell I life certainly forms. do. Uh, I, I think there might be, and we could never know about it, which is which is the weirdest position. Mm. I think because of a uh, speed of light being uh, being an absolute rule, mm. which it seems it is, even through a vacuum, it only goes a wee bit faster. Um, I think that we could never possibly know about it, and they could never possibly know about us. Mm -hmm. So if you can't know about it, it's almost the same as it not happening. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's been you know millions of people smarter than me uh, who have speculated. I mean, even right to Hawking and certainly Carl Sagan, uh, who speculated that it could be out there. But when you do that Einstein cone of what we can possibly know, I mean, if you're talking about something being millions of light years away, that means we send a message at the speed of light, they get it millions of years <laughs> millions, from now, yeah. and then they answer back. I mean, that's really worse than AT&T with an iPhone. It's way slow. Just so not about. being able to know, you know, if you're, you're we're in this cell... That yes. because of the speed of light, we can't get out the of the proverbial. No one. You know, I was to talking to Lance falling, Burton. Yeah. You know, Lance Burton, the magician in Vegas, and he went. So you're saying that speed of light travel is absolutely impossible? And I said yes. And he said, "Well, uh, how am I going to get to other planets?" <laughs> I said, "If we could do speed of light, <laughs> they're not sending you, Lance. We're not at the top of the list." <laughs> There's gonna be five guys out Lance. there, right? <laughs> Poor Lance. Although even the smartest chimp, the smartest chimp, Coco, can only sign. It's like, as far as what we know, even if Einstein was the brightest, or Hawking, or even Sagan, who thought that they were aliens, but they just couldn't get here because of the distance. Maybe we just don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe our 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 the peak of where we can go is five percent of what you really know. I to love travel. that you pulled the number out in the middle of this speculation. Five percent yeah. number came in. Five percent. I wanted to say a minuscule amount, but I said throw out a percent. It will sound like you've done some research. Five to <laughs> seven percent. Oh, oh, that would have yes. been better. Five, five to, to seven. seven. Give yourself some leeway. Sure. I like Jimmy's thought on that though. Because they do theorize wormholes. I mean, Hawking right. talks sure, about sure, those. I mean. There may be ways to do it where you're not actually covering the distance that we just can't, our mathematics Absolutely. don't cover. Absolutely, and if you're talking about a period of uh, the entire time there's life on Earth and you open that up, but I'm talking about mm -hmm. how long we're going to live, yeah, how yeah. much intelligence we have, I don't think there's a way we can find out. And the great thing oh, is, that's depressing. if we really do have aliens come visit us, I don't think there will be any doubt about it at all. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it'll be one guy, you know, high on swamp gas, who tells <laughs> you that he happened to see it. I think we'll all know very, very clearly. It'll be also, a holy shit moment for everybody, also, yeah, know, for uh, the world. Hawking... Um, uh, screaming Steve Hawking said <laughs> you know, he's a little worried about the aliens coming in, and I'm going, well, he, he should be. He's the slowest guy. <laughs> Pete Hawking, you don't have to run faster than E.T. You just have to run faster than the guy with Luke Gehrig's disease. Move, move, run, run, run. So I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, as, as, as big and clumsy as I am, I can outrun the guy at Oxford in the wheelchair. <laughs> yes. So he should should be worried. He's the last guy. How the fuck is he still alive with the little guys? That's amazing. It's, it's that takes you out quick, usually. It's better than that. His wife divorced him for cheating <laughs> right, on her with a nurse, right. and all he could move was one fucking finger. <laughs> and a... you, with your limp dick, <laughs> can barely... He pleases a nurse with one <laughs> finger and a synthetic voice. <laughs> I mean, this guy is the biggest pistol who ever fucking lived. Never mind Ron Jeremy being an ugly guy and getting laid and blowing himself. This is a guy who, his wife divorced... You were cheating Over a with pinky. A he can only move 
one finger. You would <laughs> think pinky. if you had the defense, I can only Come move on. one Let's finger. Go. You'd be home <laughs> free, right? That defense didn't work for him. He can't fucking move. Was he she just a lunatic, though? Formula, though, to know exactly where to touch. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was like, yeah, I know exactly <laughs> where to He couldn't is. wash his pinky because she fucking <laughs> smelled it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dummy, he came home. Maybe she was just a lunatic. <laughs> where you been? The cat kept licking his fingers. Yeah. What's going no, on? No, he actually the married boys. the nurse after. So wow. he, 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 maybe she was that a lunatic. That is amazing. Hey, getting wow, back to the martial man. arts thing, I, I lost the instant feedback, but someone wants to know if you took on like Chuck Liddell or somebody to prove that martial arts is. If I actually, if I actually fought, uh, fought like yeah, a martial yeah. arts guy, to prove that <laughs> no, it was I bullshit. Didn't, I, we didn't, we didn't fight anybody. But we do talk about. We do have teller break a zillion boards because you know they'll tell you yeah. we're going to break ten boards. You still with me here? We're gonna break. <laughs> we're gonna break ten boards, and you, when you picture them breaking ten one-inch boards, you picture them taking the ten boards and piling them up, mm -hmm. and then smashing them. But they put chopsticks yeah, I know, between but, each each and that's each the layer, trick. Yeah, which changes right. the physics of it entirely. What does it right. say? Am I wrong here? Well, uh, it does say it's a Japanese which means you system. Just, yeah, this website says that it was in 1883, and some. Jigoro Kano gave his students a black belt, and then, but it, it never fully the, explains the color, the purple? And, color yeah. and ranking <laughs> system. It says most other arts that have ranking slash belt color systems adopted them from the Japanese. Right, the Japanese. But but the word purple, it's not in the purple belt. But yeah, so they're basically going through one board, t ten of those. They're going through one board instead and also of a ten-inch board. You use each of the boards as you as you go through. Correct. Break the subsequent boards yeah, afterwards. Correct, yep. But we have Taylor do it. And it was really because you know we're a low-budget show, and you know boards cost money. You know <laughs> Home Depot wasn't blowing us like Carl's Jr. So you know we had we hit the boards, and Taylor just goes, you know, Taylor's never done this before at all, and Taylor just goes. Okay, run the camera, and oh, I'll break shit. ten boards. And, uh, <laughs> and we all figured this is going to be great because yeah. if he gets hurt, it's even better, you <laughs> yeah. know. So we're all kind of going. This and we, we have a cover for it. We hadn't told Teller, but we had a cover for me to commit a voiceover and go. See, he's an asshole too, right? Like you know, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And Teller goes, Whoa, boom, and goes right through him. No, no training, nothing. Ten boards with the chopsticks between them. Damn, because I'm standing there on the set and I'm ready to like cover and the one thing I hadn't prepared for Is it was just going actually yeah. doing it. <laughs> so you just gotta go um, good. Uh, hey, <laughs> no, like, oh, fuck. Uh, Mars, it's all bullshit. Uh, 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 have you ever broken a board, Mars? We don't break break boards. I no. do uh Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so that's why there's a purple belt in there. Okay. okay. Oh, oh we don't break boards. What de what boards? degree purple belt are you? Oh uh, no degrees either. What? We just go from white to blue, to purple, to brown, and then black. But what's the like a, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighter, legitimate fighter, as a defense? I would say that's a tremendous self defense, and that is a martial art. It's like if I had a regular guy with no training, like myself, against a guy who knows Jiu Jitsu. I mean, even a strong guy, stronger than me, is going to lose most times. I mean, I think what you're the the disagreement would be that they're. That doesn't happen in human interaction. <laughs> in real life. In human interaction, you're usually outnumbered tremendously, or someone has firepower, a or you're in you're in a uh, you're in a somehow uh, diminished capacity. Most of your bar fights, for instance, that you're going to get into, do not involve two guys with training squaring off against each other. Most of them are just two hits, and it's very fast. Yeah, <clears throat> right. Very fast. And the really all you need to learn for martial arts for bar fights is be the first one to hit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy who is the most angry and actually yeah. hits first. What you don't want to do, the stupidest thing to do, is be the guy that hits first and hits softly. <laughs> you want to be the first guy to hit and hit hard because the chances are the fight's going to be over mm -hmm. in 15 seconds I, yeah. and you can decide where it starts. So the, the question is not, I mean, for all this stuff, there's nothing wrong if you're seeing it as a physical way to play chess and you're learning about it what we're really attacking is that there's any sort of standardization that anything means anything and that um, and that it actually is useful for self-defense I mean for a woman to not get raped 
44 Magnum, one shell in the head, <laughs> stops rape instantly. <laughs> the way you walk down the street with confidence, less apt to work. Yeah. But I'll tell you, the 44 Magnum bullet somewhere in the uh, cerebellum, it goes from rape to not rape instantly, <laughs> just instantly, and the and the and the nutty thing is, what always amazes me is that women are the ones that should have guns and should have protection because they're mm. the ones that are most apt to be uh, apt to be smaller and victims. I mean, in, sure. in in our not in our country, in our world, women are victims, men are perpetrators. So you know what I've always pushed for is every woman. Gets a gun, and then the world gets really, really safe. Except for maybe you guys. It gets a little <laughs> scary. <laughs> they would get a little scary. So, so, so our beef is not with with people doing it, and not with even who cares that there's no standardization. If you're doing it to be with your friends and to get more physically fit and to challenge yourself to learn something, that you you can't argue with that at all. But if you think that walking down the street when you get mugged by four guys, you're going to be in a better position. I think any martial arts with any sort of morality is going to tell you give up your money, right? Yeah, you don't want to take off. Exactly, guys. exactly. But a woman, a woman with things... ten years of martial arts training against a woman who has just say jogged for ten years, both equally healthy. Right. Um, Those two fighting, I'll uh, pay no, cash a, money a, to watch a, it. A rapist. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> a, ra a rapist attacking both, no weapons. Say all things being equal, the woman who's just exercised for ten years, or the woman who has trained fairly vigorously at martial arts for ten years. I think the woman who's had ten years of martial arts training has a better chance. Has a better shot at defending herself because. Mm. I think she. I think you've been trained in, in counter striking against a few guys. No, no. Say one guy. All things being one, one guy. guy. No, again, a few guys is is a is a rough one. But say one one larger guy, a woman who's been trained to kick and trained to punch and trained to grapple, has a much better shot at a woman who has just weightlifted at throwing the right punch or throwing the right knee or uh, or, or but, bending something the right way. Uh, what, what we find a good is, point. You is, don't read about is in the that. panic in yeah. the panic situation. You don't. You don't really. You don't really get that. The other thing is, in terms of muggings, um, you are much better off. It's about a thousand dollars a year, even for a child's class. Over over a period of few years, you can spend about a grand. If you have a grand in your pocket and you get mugged and just give it to them, it's a much better use of your money and time. You save a lot. Of, what are, the opening of the martial arts show is Teller and I saying, here's our martial arts training. Uh, guys go to mug us and we go, here you go. Here's all we would have spent on martial arts the past 10 years. <laughs> and the guys go, far out! And they're just done. And then, you know, we didn't hurt our hands. We didn't fall down. Didn't have to clean the toilets in the uh, in the strip mall dojo. That's, yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> I'm actually happy he said that. As a rapist, I feel much more... <laughs> hey, uh, and, and, and one more topic uh, on sure. the new season of Bullshit Season 8. Uh, teen sex. Well, I can't believe Anthony what? hasn't brought this up to... Uh, see that? Penn well, let our fine guests here this morning. What we wanted to cover with that is all the hysteria on the um, on the texting. Uh, our the culture, sexting, right? Our, our sexting. Our culture has changed tremendously, and there are now, and this is the part that is so horrifying. There are now children, fourteen, fifteen years old, who took pictures of themselves naked to send to friends and are yeah. being yeah. are being busted for child pornography mm. because the rules on child pornography say that even if it's on yourself you are at, there is no victim it's a crime against society so you're the perpetrator so there are uh the the one case got ended with the girls who were supposed to go through this whole thing but there are still cases where and I'll just tell you if we had sexting when I was in high school, there would have been pictures of my hard penis <laughs> sent to every single student and teacher in Greenfield yes, Public exactly. High School in 1973. Yes. Uh, I can't imagine. I might have, maybe Ronnie Pronto, I wouldn't have sent to him. But other than that, <laughs> every single student, you know, the certainly the entire band, <laughs> the entire, they would have all gotten, and that makes me a child pornographer. Uh, the other thing that's a problem is state to state, it's very, very different. And many of your sex offenders... Telling me, it's very hard to keep up with, with those laws. <laughs> well, for instance, in, uh, in, in... He has to drop a girl off at Delaware and meet me in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, uh, in Nevada, your age of consent for, uh, for heterosexual sex is 16, for homosexual sex is 18.
Yes. So I, that gives us two years head start. <laughs> I guess that's, that's what they're thinking. We'll, we'll let them have some rice, but let's get a head start in there. Yeah, maybe they'll so, really adhere to the regular sex and but I mean, keep that homo stuff out of here. <laughs> two years to yeah, get two, two years. Two, two years head start. Mm. Uh, so it, we're really talking about in the in the teen sex thing. It comes down to what I always say, which is you know the kids are all right. Kids are not doing worse nowadays than they were doing mm -hmm. in the other generation. Two things are always true. One, the world keeps getting better. Two, people just keep thinking it's getting worse. I mean, we're seeing that a lot. Crime rates in the United mm -hmm. States are down insane. I mean, especially New York City. Yeah. And, uh, and yet people have this hysteria about this stuff. And the fact is, yes, 16-year-olds are sexting to each other like crazy. Romeo and Juliet were 14. <laughs> and when it was first put on, one of them was a guy. So uh, <laughs> things have not gotten worse since Shakespeare's time. Yeah, and the uh, it's just the technology's changed. Obviously, it's easier to send a picture of your cock to uh, somebody right. uh, than it would be to have to get the Polaroid out and, and then write a letter. But you mail it. When, <laughs> when was the first time you took a Polaroid of your cock? How old were you? Oh my God! Let me see. <laughs> Probably when, when I first got a Polaroid from my. My seventh birthday. <laughs> exactly. Exactly my point. Yeah. And you're not doing time as a sex offender for the no, rest of your life. He didn't no. take the picture his uncle did. <laughs> yeah, he's doing time. <laughs> it was that one, two, three smile yes. thing. <laughs> well, we'll just let this develop. He is right, though. I mean, in high school, if I could have done it, oh, I would have done yeah, it. Done it right? second, I'm 41, and I have no fewer than 10 cock photos on my iPhone. <laughs> Send one to Penn. I'd be How flattered. many are yours? I would say six are mine, four are enhanced. <laughs> and one is undetermined. One is undetermined, yes. It's Lady Gaga. We don't know what that thing is. <laughs> What's this I got here? I don't know. Uh, She's hey, got some kind of... Uh, someone on the phone what? said that uh, the, the seventh season of Bullshit's on DVD. Uh -huh. I got a copy in my hand. Uh -huh. And uh, was the Vatican episode on there, and why isn't it on DVD? Is this, oh, is this a popular let question? Let see that. The Vatican isn't on there? I don't huh. know. Uh, that's huh. what someone's huh. saying. Huh. Let me see. Oh, you know. Well, this is a big... video. Well, I'll be, I'll be <laughs> fucked. We did that show, The Vatican. We did a show in The Vatican talking about the Pope. It's not on here. You know wow. something? I'm going to look into that. <laughs> Tell them I'm going to look. How oh. did that? What huh. the? Maybe it's just left off the wrap, right? Yeah, yeah. Huh. What the? I'll have to. I'll have to look Maybe into. Maybe it's that. a hidden track. What the fuck is that about? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck that's about is uh, we were it. not the ones that put together the uh, the DVD. Uh, we yeah. did the Vatican show. So Showtime show. decided that it shouldn't be on DVD. No, I think I think it was actually uh, whoever manufactures this. Yeah, it was clearly just. Uh, uh, yeah, this is. So is it on there? Just not listed. Look at this. Look at that. What does it say right there? Made in Mexico. Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Oh, it was those fucking. The Mexicans that's why again. the Arizona law is yes. so important. They will take away. And, and tiny bullshit. and tiny print says does not include the Vatican episode. <laughs> <laughs> that is bizarre. Who made the decision? Honestly, that's, not put that on there. Uh, the 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 truth of the matter is, and what this the is. Fuck? I that's was not DVD. told about it until you the, your first the DVD came copy. out. Wow! And that reaction that you just saw of me doing that was not true. I knew it wasn't on there, but the original one was true. We're telling I go right. what, Wow. What, I guess they didn't put it, they didn't, uh, what the, what, what, and we sent a, an email to uh, Showtime that, that said, what the fuck? Wow. And it came back saying we left it off. And then the fans went, you know, you fucking pussies, how could you, because yeah. you know, yeah. that's what, what, names what, on what, it. what is the word you see right there? Yeah. You know, everything is it's my fault. It says ten. my name there. And I agree with them. It is my fault. I should have said to Showtime, you know, when you put out the season, put all the shows no. on yeah. there. But <laughs> me, I didn't think to say now, that. Now, you've been in entertainment for a very long time. Are you numb to that whole thing at this point? When people are fucking with your work or... You know what I mean? It still obviously bothers you, but are you kind of oh, sure. uh, are you kind of numb at this point? Like they're going to do what they're going to do. Uh, you you have to realize that they do own it. You've made the deal mm. to uh, to sell, and you guys have had run-ins with the Catholic Church. Yeah, you know you know that they have uh, an inordinate amount of muscle, and people are afraid of them for 
which 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 I think is a real disservice to Christians in this country. I mean, I look at the mail that comes in. We have said scathing things against Christians, and the overwhelming majority of the letters, and you can back me on this, say, you know, I'm a Christian. I believe that Jesus Christ is a Savior, but I love you guys, love what you do, think Mm -hmm. you're really funny, you present your point sincerely. Those are the letters we get. And when you do something like this, it makes it look like they're fucking whack jobs like other religions we won't mention. Yes. You know, it makes it Islam. <laughs> it makes it look that way. And the fact of the matter is, if I show you the mailbag, there are a huge number of letters from really sane Christians who believe in the marketplace of ideas. What? And the fact of the matter is that I'm an atheist and a hardcore one, and I listen to gospel music. I listen to Ray Charles. I listen to Christian music all the time and i enjoy it and i respect their right to do it and the passion and the sincerity touches my heart that's what the marketplace of ideas is supposed to be and when people Mm. in power get frightened they not only do it they don't do a disservice to atheists they do a disservice to christians i mean i really see it as bad what was the problem that they had with the did episode. Like, what, did you do, what did you do in that episode? You mean that whole that... thing I just gave didn't deflect you? You just no. sat there nodding, looking I, right at me and go, I'm I've got the going, follow-up, Mr. I President. Just know. And what about the oil spill, Mr. President? No, uh, but healthcare is going well. <laughs> <laughs> You're just that asshole, aren't there you? Had a, yeah, there had to be something in there that they were like, <laughs> because if it's just you with an expose on uh, the Catholic Church, uh, yeah, those have been done without people freaking Abs- out. And absolutely. Pulling so there and had to really, be something there's, in there. <laughs> there's, there's, there's nothing in there that is uh, uh, lawsuit worthy. There's nothing in there that hasn't been covered since. Mm-hmm. What's the most but, outrageous point you make? Uh, the most I, outrageous I didn't see that point episode we made bullshit. is that maybe the Catholic Church did some covering up of child molesting by some priests. Well, of course they did. Oh, Tremendous amount of course they did. Now. And fucking Bernard Law it was given a, a, fuck, a better position right. in, in somewhere. Everyone knows Rome that. that, that it's point. horrendous. Yeah. And the, did Showtime give you an explanation? Because you're Penn. You're not some schlub. They, obviously, they had. They couldn't just say to you, ah, we didn't feel like it because of who you are. They had to tell you, look, this is what we oh, felt. You, 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 you guys, I mean, you guys don't have to have this explained to you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, that's why we bring it up. I know this whole we've shit, lived. Yeah. We've lived this it's, it's, over it's, the years. That's frustrating. It is that's... you. You love doing your job more than anything. You love having the platform to say what you want to say. It's yeah. their money. It's their decision. Uh, the sh- the freedom that Showtime has given us has been overwhelming. They don't do any sort of editorial tampering with the shows at all, and they get little bothered by something, and they pull it, it, it you, you have to say, it's not the government, it's not censorship, yeah. Yeah. and we're certainly welcome to do, I mean, we have the First Amendment intact, we can do that whole episode and more on some other place, you're welcome to do that, so constantly, uh, you want so much to just be a uh, raging crusader fighting for truth. But the truth of the matter is you're working with people who are very good to you and treat you very well and have a slight difference of opinion on one thing. And I, I know I watched you I watched you guys go through it. Everybody did. Yeah, and uh, I too. think I think I could have sat in either of your chairs and played it exactly the same fucking way. Yeah. <laughs> was, it, was it kind of the case of pick your battles? Like, you know what? We, we're a little annoyed about it, but they are good to us overall, uh, so fuck pick it. Your battles is, is is a little more cynical than I'd like to be. It's a little more like you're working at a Seven Eleven, and then the other well, guys cleaning the Slurpee machine. <laughs> and you don't like the way it's being done, and you go, oh, "Come on!" And he goes, "Ah, you know, fuck you!" You know what? You One other. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's much. You don't realize that even freedom of speech comes down to who left the dirty yogurt dish in the in the public <laughs> kitchen. You know, it all comes down to that. Sure. But uh, what makes it easy for him to, he knows the episode's out there, so he's yeah. able to do it. It is. And, yeah. and expose the Catholic Church, you know? And it's, and it's a good episode, and that's one of the reasons mm-hmm. the fans get so upset about it. And people have said to me, well, then you're okay that's if good. this one gets it's, put up anywhere. And I go, it's not mine. I sold it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I sold it to somebody. It's good for you. You know, after yeah, you... Uh, it's good for the show. Yeah. yeah.
You know. It probably is. Uh, and it's a really good episode. You hey, know? Uh, and uh, I was shocked when you just held this up to uh, me. Hey, <laughs> yes, I saw that. Are you shock you had. I, I ask you every time you're in, are, are you doing podcasts or anything anymore? You I'm doing a thing called uh, Penpoint, Penpoint on Rev3 that's really cool. I, I've done I've done pod stuff before, but this they're doing a lot of um, editing on and putting in a lot of information. Because you're not doing radio anymore, unfortunately. Uh, no, I'm not. And it's... Uh, he was here. He was I, on in New York. It was yeah, great. I, I loved it. I yeah. most love doing it, but I, I, you know, I do full-time shows in Vegas, and I also, um, I have two young children, and it was just a lot of time. You know, you, you guys know. Mm -hmm. you, Dude, know you, I, you were you were great on the radio. Well, thank you, you were, so much. You were thank a you. Great well, he's listen. pulled up. He's pulled up pen point here. So is that? It's sort of like your radio show, very right? Much so, okay. Very much so. Uh, you know what? Let's. We should turn people on to this. I would. I would check this out. It's yeah, on uh, pen point on Rev three. Rev three. Okay. Does yeah. Teller, revision, does Teller ever want to? Like three. at this point in the career, does he get frustrated because he's not heard, or is he totally cool oh, with no, being no, Teller? Well, Teller just did a wonderful production in Macbeth uh, last year. Uh, that might actually be moving into Manhattan. He's doing a show with a with a local guy named uh, Todd Robbins, who you may have heard of, who's uh, does a lot of sideshow stuff. But they're doing a show called Play Dead, which is a uh, which is a spiritualist uh, uh, manifestations and so on, kind of a, a scare show that he's working on. And Teller's always directing and always writing, so he might get frustrated if he wasn't doing stuff. Right. But he's yeah. doing stuff yeah. all the time. He, he plays it perfectly too. Before we let you go, uh, the oil spill you got anything on that the only thing i have on that i mean it's a horrible catastrophe tragedy and you want to blame people and i just saw this thing on facebook where they were going they did a facebook group called uh, boycott bp yeah. and i thought you know 11 people have died their companies being destroyed they are vilified by everybody and i guess these picture people picture that the guys at bp are going okay oh shit not a facebook <laughs> they're page. boycotting us on facebook <laughs> we better clean this shit up we better clean it up now oh they're gonna boycott us on the worst thing that's ever happened has happened to them the pressure they're under and you can hate them all you want, but the hate doesn't come near the fact that 11 people died. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I mean, working with me, the number of people who've died has been zero. <laughs> I, I can't imagine the horror they're going through. And I know that, that, People are freaking out and saying, how can you defend BP? There's no defense involved. It's just straight compassion. Yeah. And we've got a horrible disaster. And I hate to say this, and I think people get uh, just get ripped apart for saying this, but I don't know what mistakes they made, but I just do know that bad things happen even when smart people do everything right. Mm. And I'm not saying that smart people did everything right, but even when smart people do everything right, things Shit fuck goes up. wrong, <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And when I, and I had friends just scream at me and rip me a new asshole because I just said, oh man, I'm so fucking glad I'm not them. Oh, you got sympathy for those assholes? Can't They're believe destroyed. Yeah. No, Sticking not, up for big oil, man. man. Yeah, it's not really no. sympathy. It's just, you know, I'm really happy to be a juggler and a magician <laughs> and not a guy in the Gulf of Mexico running a saw two miles down and trying to plug a fucking gusher that I can't see, you know, using essentially, you know, dental floss and a tampon. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm really glad I'm not the guy doing that and calling home and going, no, honey, I really am working on the oil that's destroying the world. I'm not, you know, I'm not banging the secretary. I mean, it's just, it's just like, and now Facebook, oh, fuck, yeah. they're going to boycott us. The stations are closed. They're going to have to have armed guards around them. People are going to riot about being they don't give a fuck about your Facebook profile. We're losing friends. <laughs> We're losing Facebook friends. Exxon unfriended us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's almost it. like yeah, BP is not winning. It's not like they're, they're capitalizing on this. This is no. a, probably this is, a company this ending is disaster. Part of their plan. <laughs> yeah. Our plan. If we can destroy you don't think the entire Gulf, Gulf Coast of the United States, <laughs> we'll be fabulously wealthy. Um, they're not no, getting the question away with is, it. No. And of course, no. you know okay. the thing no one's talking about, and I, I'm, I, I hesitate to say this. The Jews. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about uh, we talked about this in an earlier episode of bullshit is the Arctic drilling that we stopped. Yeah. We know how to do Arctic drilling. And we could have done it 
pretty easily. And yes, there's been a mistake up there now and things going badly there too. That's not covered very much. But when the environmentalists said, you know, stay away from the few caribou on, you know, on the frozen <laughs> tundra, you shouldn't drill up there. They then help move it to places that are really, really hard to drill. They've taken yeah. away the, the low hanging fruit. Of oil. So part of it is all of our faults. I mean, we are saying don't drill in the Arctic. And also, by the way, we want our oil cheap and we want it fast and we want to use it constantly for everything. Uh, and by the way, guys, don't ever fuck up. I eat more Gulf shrimp than I do caribou. <laughs> so, like, I'd rather have the caribou coated in oil. Then, then your oh, yeah, shrimp. My, my also, shrimp. Yeah, I shrimp. believe it's easier. I mean, if you tell me, oh, yeah. if you say the people in this room, you've got to dig a big hole. You have two choices. You can do it in the frozen tundra, and you go, oh, fuck, we can't do that. Or you can do it two miles down the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> Where's that tundra? Get me We're a on coat. <laughs> All right, get me a parka. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to get, I think we need to get hats. Yeah. And we're going to need a, do. let's get a pick. And if you got an electric drill oh. in your garage, better bring Light that. fire in a 55-gallon drum next to us. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, if you fuck Ooh, up in Alaska, some... just put a little ice over the hole. All right, yeah. fuck it. <laughs> Breathe it over. Done. We were never here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go you know, chase that caribou. That's a good point. We'll drill over there. Yeah. I, I'm just saying it's harder. You know, we, we, we're we making them do And also the people that are saying, why doesn't Obama get more involved? What the fuck is he going to do? What does he know about? I mean, okay, he's the smartest, best president we've ever had in the history of the world. I'll give you that. That doesn't mean he knows I didn't everything. Say that. He's, you know, <laughs> wow. he's not Iron Anthony Man. Anthony, comment on that one? I just, <laughs> I, I just said not give you that, and I was just like, <laughs> I didn't say yeah, that. But, 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 but I mean, what I'm yes. saying is, no matter who he is, yeah, it doesn't matter who it is. Why yeah. would it be his job? It's, to fix yeah. it at this point. Well, they don't let him go anywhere either. I also love the fact that people are saying um, we should let people give suggestions. No, <laughs> yeah. you don't have a good idea. Yeah, it makes it, I guarantee you, <laughs> you don't have a good it idea. It makes it fun for everyone, though. It's, like it's a fun for everyone. Contest. Yeah. Everything's open, a contest. Open the phone lines. <laughs> right. gotta, and the winner gets to go to the Gulf of Mexico and try out their yeah, plan. because everything's got to be like American Idol or anything. <laughs> right. We all get a chance. Okay, we're going to vote on this guy's invention to fix it. <laughs> Uh, sorry, you're you're oh, going home today. Sorry. There's also uh, there's also this this also another false thing that happens, which is the news reports this as they're trying one thing after another. They're not trying one thing; they're trying everything yeah, at once, yeah. and they're screaming and they're crying. <laughs> another failure in the Gulf, right? But it's, it's, it's just well, they, they just keep trying shit, and it's horrible stuff. and terrible. And of course, they should have had everything covered. They absolutely should have known how to get into every problem. Get out of right. every problem they get into. And you should do that, too. Yeah. But that's yeah, well, my suggestion for your personal life. Absolutely. Before you yes. go in, know how to get out. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're following that, give me a call and tell me how it's going. That actually is a, a good suggestion. <laughs> I sometimes don't adhere to those rules. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. When, and, of course, yeah. this is more important. You're not an individual. They should have everything covered. They're trying to cut corners. But part of it was my fault. I bought gas at a cheaper place. Yeah, if I bought wanted. gas at the most expensive place, I might have been telling them, be more careful and don't save me money. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't send them that message. <laughs> and we also told them not to do it when they knew how to. Yeah, yeah. Do it somewhere <laughs> really hard. And if there's a problem, it's going to be almost impossible to fix it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that. And that's where we're at. We gotta get then we'll unfriend you, motherfucker. Yes, right. and then we'll Facebook. Un we'll unfriend. <laughs> The Facebook like angle is great. Like we, we really got to get them out of here. Not our choice. They're saying you, yeah, you, you got, got, you got a, things to do. You're on a little tour there. You're doing your little doing publicity more, tour. More serious right. stuff? Yeah. Do you like being on serious full time? Um, yeah, it's, it's I love right. it, man. It's fucking yeah. uncensored. It's f fuck yeah, regular like, radio. Oh, yeah. We like, we, we like the satellite. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Regular radio fucking stinks. Don't do the Asian jokes. It got Fuck rough. That. It's it got terrible. Rough. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. The Asian joke? You were having a Sarah Silverman problem? No, but in a way, yeah, any Asian reference. If you did a voice like, oh, hello, they dumped out of it because the special interest groups, I mean, that's where it got to. Any ethnicity, they, any, it became where they were just, they were just sucking ten. cock. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm telling you. That hero was really good. That People tell authentic. me I'm very organic. They wouldn't dump me because they actually thought it was an Asian person. But <laughs> the problem was, if you were going to imitate, you, you would go down to Chinatown, and you have an interaction with the gentleman down there, and it was funny or something, and you came in the next day to describe that interaction, you're not 
making an Asian joke, some stereotypical thing, but you want to kind of imitate the guy's voice, you can't even do that. You would get fired over that. Like, so you got to say, so then the Asian guy said, I have these dried ducks hanging up here in my window. <laughs> it's like it just doesn't, they, you know, there's, there's a thing of doing an imitation of somebody that isn't this stereotypical, just But just to hammer the point mess. home, our old station that you worked for as well, they fired a guy for doing exactly that. And he's married, or or his girlfriend is an Asian broad. Yeah, he's married an to Asian broad. So, <laughs> but, so, but I mean, but he, he's he couldn't he, do the Asian thing. Yeah, the but he has Asian some kind broad. of sensitivity toward the whole thing, and he felt like it was fine. And the company actually fired him over. But it. once again, it's fired showing, him. It's showing disrespect because the way. You're, you know, it's really is special interest groups. It's not Asians. Right, you know, right. You pick, no, you're right. You pick any any Asian person of Asian descent who's listening to your show right now. Wouldn't give they, a shit. They don't give a shit at all, and they get it. They it's like they understand who you're talking to. If you were sitting around with them, they would do the voice for you. All right. Yeah. So that makes perfect sense. Why can't the big guys understand that? I, I, the guys I that know. run these companies. It's also you, you made you, a great point there. You put stuff like you know, when, these when people you, are one guy. In a garage, yep, with who a call themselves a league, yeah. right? And a they league, get, they a get, league. You know, uh, they like get that experience with this. Bill Donahue, yeah, yeah. 100, uh, 100, yeah. a little bit, right? You know, one hundred and fifty letters, That's and you we... try to tell them, can't you guys do math? Just write it out. They, they'll go away. They don't have this. They don't have the power to do anything. We're gonna boycott. We're gonna do this. Well, we gotta fire these guys. No, you don't. Yeah, well, you leave yeah. it alone. We've been telling the bosses for years. Tell the, the special interest groups to go screw. Also, how Just many fucking, of the don't guys? Give them the power. Yeah. How many of the guys who write complaint letters in crayon <laughs> buy Lexuses <laughs> from Letterman? You yeah. know, what I mean? how many of these guys so. are? I just say, why can't you be money hungry? <laughs> yeah. Look at you know you know how many of these letters are you getting from Bill Gates? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now they're, they're panicking. panicking. All right, so, there you are. Uh, oh, shit. Pendula, right. what what do we need to tell the people? Obviously. Bullshit season eight starts Thursday at ten on Showtime, so we Great got that show, out. Yeah. Seven is on DVD. Seven now. is on DVD. I'm going home and watching because I, I didn't get to see a lot of these episodes on this one. And check out uh, Pen Point on mm -hmm. uh, Revision Three. Absolutely, that's yeah. what Revision I would say. Three. Yep. And thank you uh, so much. It's so much so Thanks for such a pleasure love, to do your yeah, show. Love People tell me here. after the show in Vegas, you know, I love hearing you on. Oh, when I go, ah, it's, it's an easy show it's to good. do. It's I like right. it. You said uh, your just, crew are yeah. their fans, right? Yeah. Oh, you know, oh, they cool. in the warehouse. It's the only time they ever hear me <laughs> <laughs> when I'm actually in the room with them. They're not listening. <laughs> when you guys, you give it a certain kind of uh, a certain kind of importance, they pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come to me and go, "Oh, I didn't know Vatican wasn't on." I told you that. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I got I got to do a little Twitter action for you. Oh, there you are go. Are you on the Twitter there, Penn? I am on the Twitter under the name Penn Gillette, Strangely enough, all right. oh, you got that, huh? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have to go the real Penn Gillette, Yeah, because there's some Penn Gillette guy just going oh, around with your picture. And I got Jim Norton, but I had to follow the guy. He's like, just follow me, and I'll give you your name. I'm like, all right, fine. All right. So I'm following this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Penn, how do you? How about your, your pose shit. for a fucking picture? It was there spontaneous. You there you go. All right, should we go to break? Uh, because they are panicking. He's yeah, got yeah, a yeah, yeah. Hey, Pen, Let's thank go, you. Always a pleasure. Okay, Pen Gillette, everyone. Pen Gillette, everyone. Pen's good. I like when he comes in. Like having a man. Kenny was not happy with that martial arts talk. Well, well, why didn't Kenny come in and debate him? I don't know. Kenny's just, you know. Kenny, Kenny debates Kenny. somebody. Well, I mean, he just wasn't pleased. I, I mean, out of, out of everything he was talking about, I mean, that one was a little rough. I disagree. I think... I, I don't think he really made his argument on that one, I but, think he was talking... Whatever. See, I, I don't think... I, 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 I think he was talking more about the average Joe and Jane kind of going out, learning the martial arts in a place like, you know, a some, strip of mall? The, some of these strip mall martial arts play, plays, and then thinking that if they're uh, confronted by a mugger, um, that they can... Uh, thwart the situation using the martial arts that they had learned, and that's a lot of times that's how uh, these things are presented to people. I'm not talking about MMA guys. If you get Chuck Liddell in a bar and some guy comes up to him and wants to square off, I think the martial arts that Chuck Liddell has learned is definitely going to come uh, be an advantage. Right. But I think if you get this guy that went to um, you know fucking Lion Leibowitz. Uh, <laughs> kung Fu, <laughs> and uh, I think he was also talking about how it's not how it's regulated, and actually, it's not really regulated. And yeah, that that too is kind of the bullshit part of it. So, but, uh, whatever, it's, it, it's just it's still a good guess. I think he had some points, but I think it was very easy to m misinterpret what he was trying to say. 
I, I, yeah, martial arts. Yeah, it's a great form of but self there defense. Some, there was some good comedy in there, though. But all the yeah, money yeah. I was going to spend on yeah, martial arts training, over. just hand it over. <laughs> No, I didn't want to say it because it might still be a sponsor someday. That's why. You know, I was listening very closely, <laughs> and it seemed like you agreed with Pendulette on Obama. Uh, as far as the oil thing goes, no, he's a very smart president. The best no, ever. no, 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 I didn't ever. Uh, agree. I said uh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I thought you were going to get into it with him a little bit. No, nah, very passionate about the other point you know of what, view. Though? There. Uh, you could, you can't argue politics. What I wanted to hear what the guy had to say about. Do you what he was talking about. You, we could sit there and argue, Obama's great, Obama sucks, you know, back and forth. Where, where are you going to get with that? Never works, changes anything. Or yeah, yeah. It's one of those deals. Obama, I think, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll give him a, I'll throw him a bone with this one. Um, he doesn't have to be at the fucking Gulf uh, every day. It's okay. It's okay if Obama doesn't go down to the fucking Gulf Every day well, and they, check on the progress. Weren't they giving him shit because he wasn't down there? So now yeah, yeah. he's making sure, okay, look, I'm down here. He had a vacation planned or some shit. And it was like, well, you can't take a vacation during this time because there's oil leaking. It's like, you know what? What's he going to do? Roll up, his, roll up his sleeves and fucking get his hands down there? Public I mean, is stupid. It, it is kind of like putting a little much on, on the guy. Uh, there's so much else to criticize him about. Uh, with real issues that he is responsible well, for. My only question about the whole oil thing, do we have enough volunteers down there cleaning this shit up? Yeah, I don't know, do we? I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is there. Uh, the how, bird, how the birds have all volunteered, and they're yeah. cleaning up. Uh, <laughs> That's the all they're doing like is crazy. trying to help. They're, they're doing helpful. their job. You know how much uh, oil a pelican can fit in that big bill? You ever <laughs> oh see him? He gets up, they open his mouth, oil pours out. Can you imagine? It's great. They're doing that, a great, great job. They're helping. They decide that's the only way to clean up the oil. Yeah. Use the pelicans. Pelicans, pelicans eat it. And they, use their, they make you shit in the gas tank. And then like pelican. the Flintstones, he just goes, It's a living. <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, oh, Pendulette turned a lot of people on to Otto and George. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, he loves Samurai Otto and George. Yeah. Loves, loves Otto. Loves the Otto. Yes. Very cool.